you're probably using it right now. When you connect to the internet, you're probably using NAT or network address translation. In this video, we're gonna discuss NAT as well as PAT or port address translation. You'll see that this goes by different names, but most commonly it's known as NAT. This is where we are translating an internal IP address or private IP address to a public or external IP address. Don't let the terminology confuse you. Cisco uses some terms that can be really confusing initially, but once you learn about private, public addresses, local and global addresses, it'll make a lot of sense. Do a quick test on your computer or your phone. Have a look at the IP address that you're currently using. So as an example, on this Windows computer, I'll open up a CMD prompt. I'm gonna type ipconfig. Notice this IP address, this is the interface connected to the internet. IP address is 192.168.1.12. Default gateway is 192.168.1.1. But when I go to the internet and I go to a website such as whatismyipaddress.com, notice my IP address shows up as 145.224.65.100. It shows that I'm in London. We're told that the ISP that I'm using is Starlink. Pull one V4, London. England. So whenever I show stuff like this, immediately I get a lot of comments. Bro doxed himself. He's showing his IP address. I know where he lives. You're more than welcome to visit me in London. He probably won't find me there. A lot of people are concerned that they'll be hacked if their IP address is exposed like this. Now in this example, it's not a problem because I'm behind what's called carrier grade NAT or CGN or CGNAT, also known as LSN. So this is a type of NAT that ISPs use. So actually what's happening in my example is I'm being NATed twice. I'm being NATed by my local router here as well as by Starlink. Don't let the details confuse you. All I want to make you aware of is that in this example, this IP address doesn't really expose my location because the entire ISP is being NATed. Starlink, as an example, talks about the carrier grade NAT that they use. Internally, they're actually using IP addresses in this range, which are then NATed when you go to the internet. Again, don't worry too much about the details. I just wanted to highlight the point that this doesn't show you where I'm physically located and Starlink blocks all incoming traffic by default. By default, Starlink does not support port forwarding and by default allocates a dynamic IP address. There are options with Starlink, which I won't go into the details of with public IP addresses, but be careful with other ISPs because you may be, if you're using fiber as an example, be allocated a public IP address all the time. That remains the same. But the point here is you have what's called a private IP address. Notice IP address that I've got here is 192.168.1.12, but my public IP address or IP address as seen on the internet is this IP address. And my location is in London, even though that's not where I am. What you can see on this phone is that my IP address is 192.168.146. We've also got an IPv6 address here. That's a local IP address. Starlink and other ISPs by default will NAT or translate your IP version 4 addresses, but they won't do that with IPv6. IPv6 has enough addresses that we don't need NAT. Now, let me summarize some of this. Firstly, RFC 1918 is a really important RFC to remember. This is address allocation for private internets. What you need to understand is that the IANA or Internet Assigned Numbers Authority has reserved the following three blocks of IP addresses for private internets. We've got 10, so the entire 10 range. That's a 10 slash eight prefix. So anything starting with 10 is a private IP address. 172.16 up to 172.31. So 172.16 slash 12. So we have 16 contiguous class B networks. And then the third grouping is 192.168.0 slash zero. So 192.168 slash 16. And that gives us 256 contiguous class C network numbers. Now, even though we don't use class A, B, C today, notice they talk about a class A network, class B networks, and class C networks that have been allocated for private IP addresses. Inside a notation, it's 10 slash eight, 17216 slash 12, 192.168.16. So you're probably using one of these IP addresses right now. If you work in a big company, you may actually be using a public IP version 4 address. So here are some examples. Apple owns 17 slash 8. Ford owns 19. Mercedes-Benz owns 53. There are different companies and universities that own class A addresses. AT&T as another example. 
There have been famous examples of universities giving their IP addresses back to the community so that they can be used by other people. Notice the US DOD has certain address ranges like 6, 7, 11, and a bunch of others actually. Now, one of the big problems with IP version 4 is that we have run out of IP addresses. When they were originally allocating IP addresses, they were allocating class A, class B, class C addresses to companies like these examples, and they ran out of IP addresses. You can imagine that if they allocate an entire class A address, 16 million IP addresses to a single company like Apple, you can imagine they're gonna run out of IP addresses as they allocate those addresses to companies. So RFC 1918 has helped us delay the exhaustion of IP version 4 addresses. You're probably still using an IP version 4 address today, even though there are none left to allocate. From RFC 1918 once again, Private hosts can communicate with all other hosts inside the enterprise, both public and private. However, they cannot have IP connectivity to any host outside of the enterprise. While not having external IP connectivity, they can only communicate externally via application layer gateways, in other words, routers, or another device like a firewall that NATs their IP address. We are running out of IP version 4 addresses. No IP addresses are left. There are too many hosts, too many devices on the internet for the number of IP addresses that we have available. An odd 4.3 billion IP addresses is just not enough for the number of devices that we have in the world. So NAT allows us to conserve IP addresses by using private IP addresses internally in our organization. And these are NATed to the internet. So when we go online, we are going to be NATed to a public IP address. So again, you're probably using an IP address in these ranges unless you work for a company like Apple where you have a public IP address allocated to you. These addresses are non routable on the internet. You cannot go onto the internet using these IP addresses. That's not technically true. You could be routed on the internet using these IP addresses. What stops you from doing that is ISPs will block these IP addresses. So they will have access lists or something that stops traffic with these IP addresses from being sent onto the internet. Technically, these are just IP addresses and they could be routed on the internet, but ISPs will block traffic from these IP addresses. And that's what stops you from getting onto the internet using one of these IP addresses. Assuming that is, if your ISP has configured its routers properly, I have seen examples and it's happened to me where IP addresses like these have been routed onto the internet, even though they shouldn't have because the ISP didn't block these IP addresses. Now let's look at a practical example and help you learn the terminology that Cisco uses. You need to learn terms such as inside a local, inside global, outside a local and outside global. Those terms can be really confusing when you learn how to set up NAT on a Cisco router, but it's really important that you learn those terms. You need to learn about what it means when we talk about inside, outside, local, global. So let me explain those terms and I'm gonna show you practically how this PC here connects to a server on the internet. In this example, I'm running an Ubuntu server in the cloud. This is a Linode server. It's got IP address 45. 56.73.104 and I'm gonna SSH from this PC to that server and show you the meanings of those terms. So you'll learn again what these terms are and how they apply to a server with this IP address and a host with this IP address 192.168.1.12. So in this example, I've got a Windows computer. It has IP address 192.168.1.12. So as we've seen previously, IP address 192.168.1.12, I can use the command IP config again. Notice that's the IP address of this Windows PC. We are going to connect to a server on the internet. The server has this IP address 45.56.73.104. That's this server over here, an Ubuntu server running in Linode. It has this IP address. It's hosted in Dallas in the US. So I'm gonna be connecting from this PC to Dallas using SSH, and we'll look at the IP addresses used by that connection. Okay, so let's discuss some of the terminology. When we talk about an inside host, think of this PC as being inside our organization. So this is an insider in our organization. The host is located on our local area network or LAN. So the host is an insider in our organization. This server is an outside host. It's outside of our organization. Think of it as an outsider. So when we use the term inside or local 
or inside global, we are referring to this PC, the insider. When we refer to outside local or outside global, we are referring to this PC or server in this example, which is our outside host or outsider from our organization point of view. So here's our local router, Cisco router over here. We are connecting to the internet. We are going to be natting this IP address to this IP address, which is our router's IP address. And we're gonna be connecting to the server on the internet. I'm gonna explain in a moment the difference between NAT and PAT and how multiple hosts can be natted to a single IP address. But for the moment, we'll just keep it simple. We are going to NAT in this example, this PC to this IP address so that we can see what's happening when we connect to the server. So when we talk about an inside host, we're talking about this device, local, think of that as a local area network. What does the IP address look like of this PC when on the local LAN? When we talk about inside global, what does this inside host's IP address look like on the global internet? So when you see the term global, think of global internet. When you see the term local, think of a local area network or LAN. So when we talk about inside or local, we are referring to this device's IP address on the local LAN. When we talk about inside global, we are referring to this device's IP address on the internet. When we talk about outside local, we are referring to this server's IP address on the local LAN. What does it look like when it's over here? When we talk about outside global, we are talking about this server's IP address on the global internet. So again, inside local is this PC's IP address on the local LAN. Inside global is this PC's IP address on the internet. Outside local is this server's IP address on the local LAN. Outside global is this server's IP address on the global internet. So I'll show you this through slides and then I'm gonna show you using Wireshark and a practical demonstration of actually what's happening to make it more real world. So in this example, we've got this PC, IP address 192.168.1.12 connecting to this server, 45.56.73.104. If we look at the traffic at this point here, we'll see that the IP address is this. That is the inside or local IP address. We are not natting the server's IP address. In this example, we're going to only nat the client's IP address. So the server's IP address will look the same over here as well as over here. So notice the IP address is the same. Source IP address is this, destination IP address is this at this point in the network. Now, if we sniff the traffic on the internet, so it could be right over here or somewhere in the internet or at the server, we're going to see that the source IP address has changed because we have a NAT translation in this example, NATing the inside local address to the inside global address. We are basically NATing the PC from this IP address to this IP address. So notice the source IP address is this, it's no longer 192.168.1.12 because we've changed it or NATed the IP address. In this example, we are not NATing the server's IP address, so its IP address remains the same in both places. So IP address is still 45.56.73.104. So if we used Wireshark and we sniff the traffic there, there or here even, that's what the source and destination IP address is gonna look like. So what does traffic look like when it returns from the server? Now we're not natting the server, so the source IP address is gonna be the server's IP address. The destination traffic, however, is gonna be the natted IP address of the client or the PC. So this IP address is non-routable on the internet, so that's not what's seen when we sniff traffic on the global internet. We see the inside global IP address on the global internet. But when it gets to the router, the router nats that IP address. So if we sniff the traffic at this point, the router is natting the IP address. So the destination is now gonna be the PC's IP address, the physical IP address of the PC. So the inside local IP address, not the natted IP address. Source address is still gonna be the server. So the server's IP address remains the same because we're not natting the server's IP address. But at this point in the network, the destination IP address is gonna be the PC. But what does it actually look like practically? It's one thing for me to show you this with PowerPoint slides. It's gonna mean a lot more if you see this practically and see the real world implementation of this. So let's capture traffic on the local network as well as on the server and see what the traffic looks like. So on the PC, IP config, 
that's our IP address. I'm gonna run Wireshark. I'm capturing traffic here, but let's search for SSH traffic. There's no SSH traffic at the moment. What I'll do here is open up an SSH connection to the server. We ask for a password. We now logged into the server. If I type IP address on the server, notice the server has this IP address 45567304, which is that IP address. So we are SSHing from the client to the server. This is a server hosted in the cloud in the States. So in Wireshark, we can see a bunch of traffic. Notice the source IP address. 192.168.1.12, destination is 45.56.73.104. We see that for the traffic sent to the internet, remember in this example, I'm capturing the traffic on the local PC. So that's correct per our PowerPoint slide. Notice this IP address is sending traffic to that IP address. And that's what we're seeing over here. This IP address is sending traffic to that IP address. So we see source and destination IP address once again, IP version four on the local LAN. So again, this is on the LAN. That's what traffic looks like at this point, this IP address sending traffic to that IP address. But what's gonna happen over here? Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm gonna run Wireshark on the server and that will allow us to see what the server actually sees. So what I'm gonna do is run T-Shark, which is the terminal version of Wireshark. I'm gonna capture traffic to this PCAP file and I'm gonna capture TCP traffic only. So we can see that we're capturing a bunch of traffic here. I'll stop the capture right now because we don't need a lot of packets to see what's going on. And what I'll do is read that capture file. And as you can see in the output here, we've got traffic from this IP address being received. So the client is sending traffic to the server and then the server is replying back to the client. So we see traffic from the client to the server with those IP addresses. Notice over there. And then the server replies back to the client. So here we can see the return traffic to the client. Basically the IP addresses just get swapped around. Traffic from server to client. When it gets back to the PC, notice we see server source IP address to client 192.168.1.2. The server's IP address is the same on the client. Client sees the IP address 45.56.73.104. Same IP address is seen on the server side. Server IP address is not being natted, but notice the client IP address is being natted. So the server thinks the client has this IP address 145.224.65.100. So it thinks it's having a communication with that IP address and will return traffic to that IP address. But when it gets to the router, the router changes the IP address to 192.168.1.12. So that's the IP address we see over here. Notice, going back to the beginning, client has this IP address, server has this IP address. That's what it looks like at this point. Inside a local address is that. That's the IP address of the inside host on the local area network. On the global internet, the outside host has the same IP address, but the inside host has this IP address on the global internet. This router is simply changing this IP address to this IP address in that direction and then reverses it from this IP address to this IP address on the return traffic. Server IP address remains the same. So make sure that you learn these terms. Inside local, inside global, outside local, outside global. Inside is our inside host. Outside is our outside host or outsider. Local is our local area network, if you like. So this is what the IP address looks like of the inside host on the local area network. This is what the insider host or inside PC's IP address looks like on the global internet. This is the IP address of the server on the local area network. This is the IP address of the server on the global internet.